Robert Barron, uh, he, he made a video. Uh, he made a video recently talking about uh, diversity and tolerance as values. And uh, basically, what he said was, um, we uh, Christians would say that the fundamental value is not freedom or equality or inclusivity or diversity or equality, but love. Um, so basically, he's saying. That, that the primary Christian ethos uh, is love rather than any of these other values. He then goes on to talk about the type of love he's talking about. Um, he uses a baseball team as an analogy. and So in a baseball team there's a coach, and the coach makes decisions about who the players are and who the player, who's going to get to play in the team um, based on their skills. So Bishop Barron makes the analogy between the baseball coach and God. Um, that the baseball coach is, is discriminating and basically that allows God to do the same thing or that, that justifies God to do the same thing because surely the baseball coach is, is loving his team. Well, that's not really true, is it? The baseball coach is really interested in, in uh, the result, in, in the winning, uh, being able to win, win games. He's not really interested in his, in his team as such. Um, he, he may... Uh, act well towards them and help them out um, but at the end of the day he's he's going to select the people who who are the best for the team rather than who he thinks um, you know who he likes the best and in fact if a coach did select people who he thought was the best uh, sorry uh, if a coach selected people who he liked or people that he cared about he would be a bad coach because he wouldn't be selecting the very best people for the job now let's look at real judges. Um, does a judge love those who he is judging? Well, I would say that that's the worst kind of judge. If you had a judge, the last one you want is, is one that is going to let their personal feelings, one way or the other, decide what kind of punishment you're going to receive, or even whether you're guilty or not. Um, so the, 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 the good judge is one who is impartial and, and who doesn't let their emotions um, sway them in any way. Whereas, apparently, um, the, the God of the Bible is, is one that let, lets their emotions and their, their love or potentially um, yeah, their, their love or judgment of people uh, and, and whether they are, uh, are worshipping him. I mean, what kind of criteria is that? Not only is, are we not talking about um, you know, things that are demonst demonstrably harmful, but he's interested in his own self-glorification. And he's judging people on whether whether people um, worship and obey him uh, based on his own rules, rather on their own um, understanding of what is good and bad. So let's apply that to the situation of God. Basically, God is good if he shows emotion when he's judging people. No, a, a good judge is someone who is impartial and who can put aside their personal feelings and judge it basically on the, the merits of the case. So the last thing you want in a, in a courtroom is, an, is a partial judge, one that's going to allow their emotions to rule over their reason. Jesus Freak makes the same kind of argument that Baron does. Basically that uh, the, the reason they're condemned is because um, before God they're disrespecting God, whereas the Christians respect God and, and obey and, and worship him. Well, that's not really a very good... Uh, it's the same argument. It's basically the, the, the people who are sinners or the people who have done wrong, well, the ones that, that uh, suck up to God, the ones that uh, are respectful of God, um, those are the ones that are going to be treated well and go to heaven. While the ones that, um, the ones that uh, don't respect God, the ones that don't believe in him, well, they're going to hell. Even though um, the, the, the Christian who, who is a rapist and a murderer, he's going to be forgiven because he's sucking up to God while... While the atheist who, who has done minor transgressions, well, he's going, to, he's going to go to hell because he hasn't worshipped God. Well, that's not really a great moral system, is it? That's not really taking responsibility. If you think that you can get into, into heaven basically uh, through a loophole of, of, of just um, sucking up to, to the judge, right? If, if, if you could get off by, you know, by basically bribing the judge, um, by, by giving him what he wants... Um, that's that's not really a good judge, is it? No. We want an impartial judge. The, the judges here on earth 
um, if, if you have a judge, you want one that's going to be impartial and is going to um, if, you know, dish, out ju uh, dish out justice if, if someone has done something wrong um, or to let them free if they're innocent. You, you want a good judge, not one who's, um, who, who's, who's uh, partial based on, on what people do to him personally. Okay, so rather than using as a judge as an analogy to, to God and God as a judge, let's say God is a father. God is a parent. Well, in this situation, is God really being um, a, a, a parent loves their child? Okay, um, they they are partial towards that child. They will give that child preference over others. Um, they are not unbiased. They are definitely, um, you know, because of their love that they are going to show show their their child preference. Um, they they may even forgive them for transgressions which are um, unacceptable in others. So, so is God like this? Because that's not a just God, is it? You can't both be just and loving. It's kind of a bit of a dichotomy. You, 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 you can't truly be both. Um, the other aspect of a parent is that they, they go through a process of transferring responsibility from the, from the parent to the child. So when a child is born, they they are completely dependent 100% on the parent. All the decisions are made by the parent for the child, and, and they have no control and no responsibility whatsoever. Um, as the child develops and grows, they are given more and more responsibility. At first, it's a very small amount of responsibility. You know, they're responsible for you know once they can walk, they they're, they're given responsibility. Um, perhaps you start teaching them not things about not to touch but you don't tell them why you don't have a discussion about why you basically um, you're, you're telling them um, and 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 they trust you there's a, a a child will trust that the parent is right and good and and they do what they're told not because they've thought about it and they have um, massive powers of reason um, but because at that age um, doing what your parents tell you is, um, is is necessary pretty much just to survive um, so we're kind of we're, we're, we're kind of pre-programmed to respect um, our parents and, and believe what they tell us. So a parent starts off um, a parent starts off having all the responsibility, but over the years that responsibility gets increasingly transferred to the child until they're an independent adult able to make their own decisions um, and based on their own moral concepts. So it starts off with the parent having a moral concept and they teach their children um, their, what, what their moral is. But the, the, the child has the ability to use reason and their own intellect to be able to determine um, what, what, the mor what their own morality is. Um, and, and that's not just influenced by the parents, but also by all of the other society around them. This, this is completely unlike God. Um, so, so God essentially is enforcing his own moral beliefs onto everyone. So, I mean, he's not acting like a parent, although he, you know, he's supposedly loving and, and parent-like. He's not, he's not transferring that responsibility to humans. He's not saying, hey, humans, I'm giving you the responsibility to look after your own moral concepts and develop your own intellectual concepts. Um, he's basically laying down the law like he's a parent forever. In other words, he's the parent that never grows old, that, that, that never lets go. He's the, he's the ultimate helicopter parent who, who is always looking to make sure that you're doing what they think you should be. That's not a cool parent, okay? That's, that's not the kind of responsible parent that allows a child to develop into a fully functioning adult, okay? Parents, their responsibility is, is to bring children up so that they are fully functioning, responsible, and intelligent adults. It isn't to be constantly trying to get them to um, adhere to their own personal views. So that was my point of view. I'm just watching my dog, by the way, because she's running around. Um, yeah, so, so so that's my point of view. Um, you know, if there was a God, and he was a good God, he would let us grow up and, and, and be be ourselves and, and have our own point of view and use our own intellect to, to, to come up to conclusions um, about how we should live our lives, not impose it from above in some kind of book.
Hello, Bella. <laughs> this is Bella. I love my dog. She's a beautiful dog. Um, I don't judge her, um, even though she's really bad. Um, so yesterday she she um, she stole some food. In fact, almost every day she tries to steal food. Um, she's a very bad doggy, um, but she's a very loving doggy. Um, we get on very well.